See, big yellow house. Now it's white. The white yellow house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a very popular recipe. Turn left Goodness. into the parking lot, then arrive at your destination. Turn left into the, oh, there it is, right there. Arrived. Here we are. Santa Barbara. Okay, here we are at the Santa Barbara fueling station with our trusty Hyundai card. Free fuel, $15,000 worth. For the first three years, on at least six years on a purchase. So since we purchased the car, it won't last six years, but we're gonna try. So first thing we have to do is open the fuel cap. Okay, here we are. Okay, remove the nozzle, put it securely in the little hole, and hope that the card works properly. Here we go. Remove card quickly, put it in your back pocket. You must enter your zip code. We're going to use H70. What does that mean? H70 means it goes. the fuel goes into the car at 10,000 pounds per square inch, something like that. Card was approved. One moment. Connect the nozzle. To try this trusty nozzle. As you can see, the orifice is a hydrogen orifice. It's not a regular fuel like car. You have to make sure that it locks in and you see this yellow strip. That means it's secured. It's not going to blast out. Okay, so now we press the button that shows H70. And it begins. Our next trip is 291 miles from Santa Barbara to San Jose, Bernal Road. So hopefully we'll get enough fuel to get there. This is an experiment, so we're not sure. <laughs> we'll make it. We're ravaging 60 miles an hour, and we picked up through regenerative braking about 35 miles. So that's a bonus, okay? This experimental trip is to find out if we can get to San Francisco on one fill-up. So we're going 191 miles or no, 291 miles to San Jose from Santa Barbara. Uh, probably have to fill up again in, in San Jose. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it really requires two stops, I think. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, time to remove the hose. You can hear the, the beeper, which is saying we're done. So the way it works is when the pressure equalizes between the car, the fuel cells, and the hose, it'll stop. So sometimes that pressure is out of balance and it doesn't actually fill up completely, but we hope that it will at this time. So here we go. Gotta hold on to the hose, pull the connector away. It's, it goes in at um, such a cold temperature that oftentimes it freezes to the uh, orifice, the nozzle. So you have to kind of play around with it for a minute or two in order to get it off. Fortunately, the nozzle was unfrozen, as you can see. It's very cold. So now we're gonna put it back in the cradle and hopefully we got enough fuel for our next trip. Receipt. Okay, we got 1.59, roughly 1.6 kilograms. So we'll see if that was enough on our range. So let's go in the car and find out what the range is. 356, okay, we're good. 
Okay, we got 90% uh, fill up. That's great. Let's wait till this comes up. I gotta wait. That's as best, good as we're gonna get. We've never been able to get a 100% fill up, but we've gotten up to 95. So today we got 90%, which gives us a range of 356. We have to go 291. So we're gonna get roughly 60 miles. We'll have 60 miles left when we get to San Jose. Take the picture of that. Okay, so we have 356 range, 90%. Okay, and next stop is San Jose. We're Traveling back. through Central California. Just past Buellton a short time ago. It's now a sunny, beautiful day. No clouds in the sky. Grace is driving. Hello. Doing great with her automatic cruise control. Take your hands off the wheel and demonstrate the adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist. So we have the speeds set at 60 miles per hour lane keeping assist and all is well we're heading to San Jose um, Campbell actually Campbell instead of San Jose because the fuel center is under under destruction or something and time to put your hands back on the wheel okay good there we go they want to make sure you're paying attention to driving look at the beautiful scenery here we came up to the uh, fuel station while Grace was in the uh, in the convenience store and said what a beautiful car it is and uh, how interesting the the uh, fuel cell was. Yeah. So now we're passing um, Los Olivos Highway 154. We're on the 101. Traveling through West Cambria, which is how you get to Hearst Castle. Oh, traffic. And um, we're doing pretty well. We have 248 miles remaining on the uh, fuel cell. And we have 161 miles to go. So we actually, it's 207 to... Um, San Francisco could actually make it to San Francisco without refueling so it it does require a fill up from home Lake Forest and then uh, one fill up at um, Santa Barbara going and this is going north on the 101 which of course means you have a headwind and you're going uphill most of the time so that's great news so looks like we're doing well Avila Beach right on the coastline beautiful Towards San Luis Obispo, going inland now. A lot of crops out here. Looks like peaches to me. Those look like peach leaves, but there sure are a lot of them. As you can see, somebody's got a lot of water here. That takes a lot of water to irrigate those plants and make those little trees grow. There's a sign King City, 12 miles. Wow, there are crops on both sides of the of the road. Lots of agriculture here. It's blowing so hard, these wind machines are making a lot of electricity. Amazing. Good place for them though. It must be windy here often or they wouldn't build them here. This is the city of Soledad, where there is a high security state prison. And uh, it's sure windy here because that wind machine is turning on its own <laughs> from the wind. And so it's really blowing. And it's headwind, but we're still maintaining um, about 98 uh, 
surplus miles. So we've got 98 bonus miles on our fill-up. It's just a top-off at Santa Barbara. I think it was uh, one and a half kilograms. Or 1.5, maybe something like that. So it was uh, not a, a complete fill-up. We didn't run out of fuel. We just wanted to top off at Santa Barbara to make sure we had enough for the next um, drive, which was 191 miles. So we're into that drive with 72 miles to go. Okay, we made a stop at Carl's Jr. to use the facilities and we've gone 183.6 miles, average 65.7 MPGE, 3 hours and 24 minutes. The magic, uh, the secret is uh, 60 miles an hour. That's what you got to discipline yourself to do to get these kind of uh, distance uh, uh, benefits and uh, conserve the fuel. However, there's very strong headwind the last 10, 10 or so miles. So we dropped down to 65.7, uh, which is uh, quite a bit less than what we normally get in the 70s. We've got 198 mile range on fuel. And we have, according to our map, 96 miles um, to get to San Jose Burnell Road for fuel. And we could actually get all the way to San Francisco, but I don't want to hassle with the uh, stations there. They're up and down, so um, we're just going to fuel up at uh, Burnell Road. Okay, so we're back in business. This is Pismo Beach, California. And we just gave you a little glimpse of Shell Beach. Hill Beach. Well, welcome to San Francisco. We made it uh, with 60 plus miles to spare with our little top off in uh, Santa Barbara. So we checked into the hotel, Embassy Suites. Now we're headed to the Crab Pot, a uh, well-known crab restaurant in at the Embarcadero on Pier 39. So it's now 7.24, so it'll be a late dinner for us. But um, we're hungry and uh, want to get some good night's rest. And tomorrow we'll make our way over to Highway 1 and back down to Santa Barbara and then down home. So it was a successful trip, no problem with fuel. And um, the Nexo worked within expectations. So we're very happy with our trip. Okay, we are heading to the Golden Gate to take some videos crossing the Golden Gate Bridge. We're on 19th Avenue, very congested as usual. Lots of lights, red lights, so a bit of an ordeal, but should be a beautiful day. A uh, little overcast, but not too bad. For June 6th, or 5th, it's the 5th, yeah. We're now entering um, Golden Gate Park. That's what the grassy, or the trees in the uh, green area in front of you, grassy. Uh, that's Golden Gate Park. And then we'll be heading through the area called the Presidio, which used to be an army base. And maybe it is still, or again. Um, then we'll be heading to the Golden Gate. Sidio area, which is a former army base and a scene of a movie called The Presidio with um, Sean Connery back in the 60s, I believe. Maybe 60s, 70s. And we're going through the tunnel through Golden Gate Park and the Presidio area, as I said, heading for the Golden Gate, which will take us over to Marin. Here we are, the Golden Gate Bridge Terminal. Turn left on to Vista Access. Route recalculating. Let's 
story has it that they begin an early part of the year painting the bridge. And when they're through painting the bridge, they have to start over. So uh, that means that they're always constantly painting, applying paint to the bridge. <laughs> so it takes so long to paint it. It takes a year to paint it. I guess that's what it means. And the hillside on the left is a fabulous lookout. It's a little difficult to get to, but uh, definitely worth the trip. Holy cow! We have to climb that hill? Yikes. God, I can't believe we're going up this street. Well, I'd say t at least 20%. Wow. In 600 feet, you will arrive at your destination. Gosh. Nobody coming? Oh, okay. Maybe they don't let you drive down it anymore. I don't know. Awful lot of people getting back in their cars. No, it's okay. You can drive down it. Here we go. The crookedest street in the world. Not arrived. Lombard Street. Very popular tourist attraction. <laughs> uh, funny. Imagine the people who live here. You gonna let me go? Okay. Crookedest street in the world. Why did they build this street? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know the history of it. All I know is that it's um, it's hilarious and super popular. Gosh, people who live here. I wonder what their homes are valued at. Oh my gosh. at the end. <laughs> Imagine getting in your driveway because <laughs> this tourist uh, driving down the street, Lombard Street, is constant. We did it. There we go. These guys are just casually walking across the street. Oh my. Locals. Oh, be careful. Now, we're heading through Chinatown, San Francisco. Uh, I think the second largest, allegedly the second largest Chinatown um, this side of China, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, certainly, probably the largest Chinatown in America. So we're heading to Cupertino to fuel up and go to the uh, Apple headquarters and then heading for Highway 1 to enjoy our trip back and staying overnight in Santa Barbara. So hopefully we'll make it the 200 miles to Santa Barbara without any problems. All right. Talk to you again soon. Here we are at Stevens Creek Road in Cupertino, California, near Apple headquarters where they... Uh, give a very high price to the hydrogen fuel, $29.95 per kilogram. That's huge. So we'll see if it works. No choice. Okay. 
dollars more per kilogram here. My goodness. Boom. Okay, we are headed from Stevens Creek in Cupertino on the 17 West towards Santa Cruz. We're uh, testing out our uh, hydrogen fuel cell Nexo. Uh, see if we can make it Highway 1 back to Santa Barbara and fuel up there. So I reduced the speed to 55 miles an hour instead of the 60 I normally run on the freeway because we have a lot of hills going through um, to Santa Cruz. So we'll see how it goes. It's uh, quite a ways to Santa Barbara and unfortunately that is the next fuel station. We fueled up at 97% at 371 uh, miles, but these hills will eat up the um, fuel cell very quickly. So hopefully we'll make a lot of downhills on our little trip <laughs> and make it without any problems to Santa Barbara. It's an experiment, first time, so we're giving it a try. We'll drive through uh, Highway 17 heading to Santa Cruz, 13 miles to go. And we're using up fuel like crazy because <clears throat> uh, we're going uphill. <laughs> and uh, kept the mileage down to uh, 52 miles per hour. That way we don't use up too much fuel. Hopefully we'll have enough downhills to get us the 200 miles to uh, Santa Barbara. That's the big game. But we're taking Highway 1, so we're not sure how that's all going to work out. Uh, but it's a beautiful drive through the Santa Cruz Mountains. Okay, I just thought I'd add this uh, point. Uh, I try to utilize the paddle shifters as much as possible because it not only does regenerative braking, but it also helps me keep my foot off the accelerator, switching back and forth from the accelerator and the brake pedal. It makes much more smooth driving. So we hope that uh, that also gives us a few extra miles. That's how we get bonus miles, regenerative braking. So we hope to get bonus miles on this trip, uh, heading to uh, Highway 1, going to Santa Cruz, and then down along the coastline. See the little box, rectangular box, with the arrows in it pointing to the left, and how they move back and forth. That's how I'm coordinating this regenerative braking and sometimes it's a liability because I don't think the brake lights work when you use regenerative braking it just slows you down with compression so the person behind you like that white GMC truck who's in a hurry is uh, doesn't appreciate the fact that my uh, vehicle is going slower when it doesn't indicate that the brake lights are on so that's kind of a um, issue with regenerative braking. Uh, it assists the driver with conserving fuel and uh, charging up the battery, which gets you a little further, a little bonus, but the driver behind you gets frustrated because he doesn't see your brake lights. All right, we are in Big Sur, California, the most beautiful, incredibly gorgeous even with the cloudy sky uh, drive you can imagine the beautiful redwoods and the uh, all the flowers uh, along the road are just spectacular however we passed several signs that said road closed 16 miles ahead what we didn't see it said was no detour so we had to turn around and head back to Monterey, go out to Salinas, and hopefully make it to Santa Barbara. It's 260 miles, and we have 282 miles that are um, available on our fuel cell. So we're going to um, gingerly uh, limp our way back to Santa Barbara without stopping in Solvang for dinner. So we hope we'll make it. We'll only have 20 miles to spare when we get there if we make it in that you know with the 282 miles that we have so we'll see how it all works out <laughs> yes
uh, anyway, we're going to give it a try. Uh, four and a half hours. Um, we should have about 20 miles left when we get to the fueling station in Santa Barbara. Ay, ay, ay. So that's our current story. We're backtracking on Highway 1 through Big Sur, all the way back to Monterey. Probably at least 30 miles uh, uh, back. And then inland to uh, uh, Salinas at the 101 and then south to Santa Barbara. Changed our plans a little, but hopefully it'll all work out. We're going to talk about regenerative braking. Okay, the paddle shifters on the car are your bonus miles. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Uh, I imagine there are some people who feel they're just silly and uh, they're, they really have no particular function except to use engine compression to slow yourself down, which is exactly what I think they are. I'm not an engineer, but I think that's what their main purpose was. But in doing so, on our trip, uh, when we got um, caught in the 101 road closure and had to turn and come all the way back to Monterey Peninsula and then out to the coast through Salinas and then 101 back to Santa Barbara, which we haven't gotten there yet. We still have 131 mile, 164 miles. Um, we picked up 40 bonus miles. So 40 bonus miles can make a difference between uh, getting to your destination and refueling or not. Getting stuck and having to be towed uh, and stay overnight in some horrible whatever, okay? So as an example, we have 164 miles to go, but we have 208 um, uh, fuel miles. So that's a difference of 40, right? Right? 44. 44, yeah. So those are 44 bonus miles that we got from regenerative braking. And also a little bit of help from a tailwind, because normally heading south from Northern California, uh, you have a tailwind in the afternoon or early evening, and um, you're going downhill fundamentally. So that's also somewhat of an advantage. So anyway, that's the update. Regenerative braking is very important. The paddle shifters, when when needed, will really give you some bonus miles. Uh, you know, even a half a dozen miles will help because, as I was informed by a general manager of of uh, uh, Tustin Honda, uh, Hyundai, excuse me, Tustin Hyundai, um, he ran out of fuel, and it. When he said, "When it says you're out, you're out. The car will stop." So I'm uh, concerned about using those paddle shifters when going downhill and building up that regenerative braking. 